Hey, Ron. How's it going? <sighs> yes, very late night, Greg. Um, I spent the earlier part of the evening redoing part of my downstairs office because cat issues. And that took the better part of four hours to get done. It's still not what I'd consider complete as such, but it's good enough that I can go in there in the morning and try and get some work done. Uh, didn't have the brackets I wanted, didn't, yeah, it was the usual sort of thing that happens when you do these sort of jobs is you don't have the screws you want, you don't have the brackets you want, nothing seems to feel right, your engineering gut tells you that everything's going to come crashing down on you, uh, but you, you push through it and you make some real bad hack jobs to say the least, but you know, it had to be done and it had to be done tonight, so... Yeah, I will probably replace in situ the brackets that I have put in there now with something a little more sturdy to get the job done. But yeah, tonight it, it's not going to fall down, but it's not what I would consider my acceptable level of durability. I would like to be able to have the brackets endure enough load that the... Um, cupboards whatever themselves would actually fail before the brackets yeah that, that's just the way i like to make things Alrighty, hey nasty rene renegade can't say i've seen you around for ed 3x yanko anafin greg travis house of moth hey i use those um old MacBook boards that you had me convert just the other day too, by the way. Someone else came at me and said, hey, can you read these BV files? And I was like, ah, oh, I swear I've done this before. It turns out I still had those old files still in my archive, so they got to um, help someone else out. Alright, anyway, so we have, um, oh, we'll talk about that A1708 if you like. The, um, let's see, it's over here, Tunk. As you can see, it's working as it should be. It was a very interesting problem, and it was riddled with um, coincidences that I really don't imagine would happen again in a hurry. Even to the point where when I finally did get it all up and running, I started testing the customer's login and everything like that and every now and then the screen would just black out and it would uh, go as if it was gone to sleep and I'd have to like wiggle the mouse or you know press a button and to bring it back and I'd have to log back in and I'm thinking what in heck is going on here anyway long story short turns out that uh, you can have these things called hot corners on a MacBook and that means you can set certain actions to occur when you drive your mouse pointer up into one of the four corners or uh, of the MacBook and it just so happened to be the person whose system I have a lot of troubles with a strange you know lid sleeping behavior and all that happens to have sleep for all the corners so you move your mouse to the corner it goes to sleep and that I nearly lost my nut it was like seriously you know what is the chances of someone with that behavior which I've never encountered before has it on a machine where we have had a nightmare of a time with the sleep behavior of it. So, yeah, hot corners. That caught me out. Um, I panicked for a bit there. The webcam also stopped working for some reason, but I think it was just a bad connection. After I put it through the ultrasonic and everything else, it's come up good. So tonight it's uh, on its test bed. Let us hope it's not its deathbed. So... It did it to you in your... No, it did it in the customer's um, system. So, like, I will test with my system, but then I'll go into their system to make sure, if they've given me the password, to make sure things are running as I expect. And that's where this weird behavior was happening. And I was like, what the heck's going on here? Anyway, it didn't do it in mine. Yeah. A reinstall would have solved it. It wasn't the cause of the original fault, it, but it was simply another similar behavior going on. The original fault was, um, the very, very original fault was a liquid damaged daughter board and connector. And then when we got the replacement deck, 
its daughter board connector that goes onto the main board happen to have the PP3V3 G3 hot pin fatigued and bent in it and that caused the hall sensor to basically run on parasitic power which made it sort of work, sort of not and it, it was enough. Anyway, check in the comment I've pinned the comment on the behavior issue and you can have a look at that. So it was that that's a three month job and I've lost a buttload of money on it. But um it's complete now, yeah. Yeah, it's bad enough one corner, let alone all four, but pfft, yeah, anyway. So um tonight we've got a fourteen sixty six back to my old classics. And this one has a problem apparently with the keyboard and mouse not responding, even though they have changed the trackpad and flex. Let us hope it's not just a bad keyboard, because that would be kind of embarrassing. Let's see, just got to get a container. Oh wait, there should be... Yep, there's one for your slot. Ah... <sighs> Could be bad resistant outlines, could be something else. I am not in the business of thinking that it's going to be something simple. Well, rather believing it's going to be something simple. I will think it, but I won't necessarily believe it. Big difference. That nasty trick needs to be posted on your workshop to remind you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And because it would happen when I'd be looking for the Apple menu to go, you know, pull down, sleep, restart, check Apple information, things like that. And I would never be 100% sure whether it was something I did, whether it was a glitch or what. You know. I mean, of all the corners to go for, that top left one is probably not the most ideal one. Anyway, that's what they do. That's their choice. Let's hope the cable is plugged upside down. Mm, that would be something. Hey, Keith and Chris and Robert Cook. Right, let's go to the overhead since we've, everybody's sick of looking at me now. Let's see if we can... Yeah, bit of crotch cam there. Hey, Munford. Well, someone's messed with that inductor there. It's It's not broken that I can tell, but it's like I had a pair of tweezers and someone was yanking on it. I finally ordered myself another 2D barcode scanner. I've got one for in this workshop, obviously, because that's how you know when I'm, you know, uh, bring up the, you know, put the barcode up to the side here and it beeps, brings up the data. But I found I also really need one down in the admin office. So I bought another one of there. They're pretty cheap. They're only like 150 Australian dollars delivered. Uh, they'll do all the 2D and the 1D codes. They're a good quality terminal. It's a data logic one. I think it's the 2430 Q2430D or something like that. But um, yeah, very handy. That combined with the... we've got liquid damage here. So a little smidge there. Just representing that front. Okay, this is definitely a new trackpad from similar supplier to what I use. Yeah, the combination of the barcode scanner and my di um, Dymo printers end up two Dymo printers. I have one to produce these labels and then I have another to produce the postage labels. So it just made things a lot easier now. I just sort of press a button, boom, you know, my postage labels are done. Thank goodness. Used to hate having to fold them up, put them into invoicing slips and stuff like that. Okay, so we've got a 00165 board. Steve K, I'm late because I had other stuff to do. Uh, stuff I didn't want to do, but I had to do. Yeah, job 250. Update this board, so it's a 00165. 
These are not the wireless barcode scanners, but, you know, I find them perfectly good once they're just fixed up. You could save one label by numbering screw boxes. I kind of prefer it this way. I know the technique you were talking about where the boxes and the shelves and everything has a fixed number and then you assign a job to that number. But for now, I'm preferring to do it this way. It just works better for me. Zero cool. you can get wireless ones, but yeah, not these ones are not wireless. Yeah, we've got a kink in the flex there. Let's have a looky-loo and see what we're dealing with. Definitely the 2D scanners are good because you can create QR codes for pretty much any amount of data. Um, I use... I think I can... Oh, for fucks. I mean... Damn it. People... Install the Wi-Fi cables properly, please. Like I said, it's just a pain, absolute pain, to have to repair those flexors, those wow, coaxial cables. So please, give them respect. It's very easy for them to pop out, which is why you have to make sure you nest them in good and proper. Alright, nothing obvious there. Hey, you know, uh, apparently the, uh, if you read the description, you'd see that the cable has already been replaced. I mean, it could still be that, but this is looking pretty new. Is it the right one? It's a 1604, but the printing looks different to what I'm used to. It doesn't look like a legit genuine 1604 it looks like someone's fabricated their own 1604 and decided to call it a 1604 then again maybe not yeah so this is my known good working 1604 flex could just be a dud keyboard too I don't know if they bothered to disconnect the keyboard cat hair. And, hey, that's actually not even mine this time. And now you can't retract that message. Everyone knows you did it. Uh, let's see. Where's my stick? Oh, crap. I missed the launch. Oh, well. I'll watch it later. Given that it's in space, it means they obviously were successful. Again. Question is, have they landed yet? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if they get the landing. I mean, for most people, the landing is the most interesting part of the whole process. Okay, let's see, here we go. Option. There is a chip on the left of the ISL that's responsible for powering the trackpad. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. I'm going to ignore everybody tonight, quite frankly. I'm going to treat you all like a bunch of idiots that I shouldn't trust. Hey, Jim. On the other hand, I'll listen to Jim. Okay, definitely does feel like the trackpad's uh, keyboard's not running because this should have bought up already. Hey, Barry West. Turns out P20 is supposed to be password. Yeah, the keyboard's not running. And that is with my known good trackpad. Alright. Uh, flex, rather. So we are going to mark this since it's job 250. 
We're going to be naughty and write 250 on the bottom. Because it's all too easy for these itty bitty little bits and pieces to get around the workshop. And before you know it, you have no idea what anything is. Hey, Sonia. How's it going? <sighs> hey, Yummy. I, s I saw your epic posts on uh, the YouTube comments. I really did. So thank you for your epic posts. My apologies that I don't get around to responding in kind. It gets a little tricky with the amount of time I'm spending fixing horrible other jobs. But I appreciate your effort. Oh, uh, well, Odom's here. Hey, it's, how's it going? It was wrong. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter that it was wrong. The point is that you put the effort in, and I appreciate that. Uh, Florian, what was your question? And hey, Micromage. Looks like there's a lot more people around this time, but I'm usually asleep at around this time. <laughs> yeah, well, bad luck on my behalf. Hey, Steve K. I've got another laptop that supposedly has an SMC issue where you have to do an SMC bypass to get it up and running. And I cannot get the damn thing to fail on me. And that's really a problem. So how do you confirm even that you fixed it other than if you're lucky enough and you do find the smoking gun? Hello, I'm enjoying your last day out of eat out and help out. Hmm. Well, what's happening after today? Hey, Paul Marrow. Hey, Mark, I was going to message you for some reason. What was it? Crikey. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mark, w would you believe one of those... Of course you'll believe this, but... One of those uh, 1708 top decks, out of the two of them, I used the one for, the one I used for the A1708 I was struggling with the other night, happened to have a dodgy pin on the daughter board connector, which caused a very similar but not the same fault as what was originally wrong with the machine. And so, yeah, that played into me wasting a hell of a lot of time. I guess we'll never get a refund from that, but um, I replaced the connector and all was good. But gee, you know, I was, I was going to message you not to complain, but just simply to give you a bit of a laugh on just how crazy that was. And then, of course, the machine turns out to have um, hot corners that put the machine to sleep. It was... You couldn't realistically make up that stuff and expect people to actually believe that. Su that's sort of like Mission Impossible crap. Okay, what are we dealing with here? So, keyboard... There's not a lot that really gets handled. Oh, it looks pretty damn good. SMC's got an impressive scratch across it. I guess first thing I'm going to do is just look around, see if there's anything that jumps out at me before I start going in and diagnosing. My brain is legitimately too stuffed at the moment to bother diagnosing. The junk in that corner there. Could just be a dead... What? Well, it's not keyboard, but that needs to be cleaned up. 
<sighs> Did you end up giving up on your favorite board that you spend a few nights on? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Mark, I mean, look, you know, I, I wouldn't put that on the cellar myself. But yeah, as you said, that's Sod's Law, that's Murphy's Law, whatever you guys want to call it. I mean, just, if it had happened that I picked the opposite machines, you know, the opposite decks for the machines, then it would have been a very clear-cut thing. It would have been like, oh, something's not quite right there. But the fact that I happened to put it onto a machine that was already having issues with hall sensing... It was just like, what are the chances? I suppose in that case, 50 50. Yeah, I'm just scratching back the corrosion on this because I don't like to leave corrosion like that floating around on board. Because when a bit of moisture comes along, it does have a habit of continuing to grow. So we're going to torture this board like I'm a dentist until I'm content that all the plaque has been removed. Sorry, Nell, you, you've lost rights for declaring faults and actually having me listen. Most of you have. I've discovered that you're all as incompetent as I am. And since I don't get to get a really long stick and beat the living daylights out of you across the internet, then why is that skew there? That's, that's a little off. Then it's better if I just ignore you all and I just simply then only have myself to blame. But the upset, the upside is that I usually don't get distracted so much if I just stick with my own thoughts rather than trying to be an inclusive person and listening to what you have to say. Alright, time to bring up the uh, schematic and board view I'm afraid. By the way, there's a new update on open board view. Pownov pushed through the changes that I was pushing. <laughs> Pardon me, so um, you can now get proper BGA pads names on Open Board View. And I do have another modification going through, and that will do the pin, uh, pin one red dot on boards for Open Board View now, too. Uh, let's see, 165. There are any small changes, but and I didn't really notice how many of these small changes. I hadn't pushed back from Flexboard View until I started using Open Board View just to you know, trial things, and I was like, "Whoa, there is a lot of differences here." I'm also doing a Open Board Data thing with Flexboard View at the moment, but it's there's so many other things that are going on. It's I'm struggling to get things all together. Okay, let's have a look at the keyboard assembly. Uh, trackpad, SPI, resistors, well, that's not going to really count. Hey Ruslan, I'm glad you understood that I was busy with other things. Well, let's start with the basic stuff. We'll just test to make sure those resistors are... Yeah, that, that kind of looks... It always kind of looks like you've got a blown resistor there or two, but sometimes it's just the laser cut, but that middle one almost looks like it's blown almost so resistance you just like to use the green <laughs> I'm getting um, I'm actually getting blue ones oh you can't see sorry thanks folks 
times like this I really should switch over to the quad view and not actually have how's the fence? fence is doing good I need more fencing but it's doing good hey Andrew Hughes alright Ruslan what's your open source project let's see what do we want we want resistance 50k high speed we're good so this should be 33. I think all these should be 33. Okay, point... Yeah, it's interesting on the multimeter it actually says 0 0.036 because I've got it in 50k mode. But my software translates it and says it's actually 33 amps, which is cool. Yes, that's good. And you're good. I don't know if this one's meant to be. I guess you are. And you're good. Okay, so either that's not meant to be. What are you? 4860, you're 100k. So that makes sense that you're out of range because I have you on manual ranging manual ranging is faster in these sort of scenarios simply because you, you just it doesn't have to try and guess well not guess but it doesn't have to keep adjusting okay trying hard to improve xcode device tool for right i don't do much with xcode I just sort of write in plain, simple Linux and uh, C, and then hope it <laughs> hope it compiles. We could just have a dead SMC, to be honest. I mean. Here we go. Don't don't ask the people, Paul. Don't ask the people, but um, use Vim with the compiler. I use Vim for everything, for all text editing. Vim is everything that you want it to be, and more. Oop, what message? Oh, goody. Thank you. Starving. Let's check this inductor. That's pretty good to me. SPR chip fry heat rust. What? What? What SPR chip are you talking about? What do you reckon? Ah, thanks, Steve. Okay, yeah. Typical audience throwing it back at me. SPR touchpad data lines ac across. Oh, right. Let's see what you're saying. Sandeep, you tell us what you're here for. We're not going to tell you what you're here for. You turned up here. Here we go, trackpad. Hey Tony W. Fifty three ninety, let's go over to the beloved SMC. Say what now? Say what? What? Didn't see that before. Was that a no stuff? Rotate the board around so at least I can 
I'm pretty sure that's U8170 I'm pretty sure and certainly someone's been someone's been suffering the itchies there and having to scratch like mad is this the itch, itchy and scratchy show? Seriously, you give me 34, 37s, give me a 165. I mean, I know they're going to be pretty much identical, but yeah, for the sake of being pedantic, I'd like a 165, I subleaf. Oh, for. Hallelujah. Give me a Yeah, okay, yep, that's all fine. That is a no stuff. Two top, two top right. Still, wonder what the damage is there. See, now, the thing that jumps out at me here is that they broke the trace. And that trace looks like it is a veer into the board. Yeah. This one here, see that? That is a bit of a problem. I don't know what that trace is for, but they have probably broken the continuity of it. Now I've got to find out what that is. That is S4 power enable. That doesn't make sense. But, so go to quad view. Nah, go to schematic. Okay, but let's see, it goes up to R uh, 8115, which is USB power standby, PM sleep. Uh, there's not meant to be a chip there, no, but um, I'm kind of curious. I think we should, I think we should repair it just in case it has a knock on effect that we're not aware of. Um, need to put a new blade in. This one is too blunt. Hey, my darling. Ah, okay. Just like, sorry. I should have done that before I. Thank you so much. Do you have any juice? Oh, a juice. Oh, heck yes. Which? Do you have orange juice? I did. So, do you want pomegranate? Do you, uh, want pomegranate? Do you have pomegranate? Yeah, I've got some. Okay. Just no, no, I would actually prefer pomegranate. Thank you. Okay. Damn it. I should have done all this before I... Okay. Just ripping off wads of paper in my crotch here. Okay. I'll switch over in a second. Hold your horses. A bunch of narcs. Eh, you don't need to. You can see what I'm doing anyway. Ah, delicious. And a 60% cocoa lint ball. <sighs> uh, let's see. Did you watch the last stream from Jessa? No, I didn't know anything about what, what's happened with Jessa. Thank you so much. I love you. Mm hmm. Ah, damn it, pomegranates just spewing all over me. Oh, damn, that's so good. It's so satisfying. Delicious. Mm. Oh, this is sort of like midnight snack.
Oh, the people who she helps. They're so dramatic all the time. Are you talking about the customers or the... Just people in general. Sorry about making you hangry. Hmm... It's a McToasty, Jim. Yeah, one AM snap. Yeah, good to one. Mm. Did someone ask how I started in board repair? Uh, started a very long time ago, but I didn't get started into MacBook board repairs until about about five years ago now, I suppose. I think back when Lewis was under under or just about a hundred thousand subs. Um, I was very reluctant to watch him originally. People had suggested to me, they said, oh, you should go check out this Lewis Rossman guy. He does everything with MacBooks. And I'm like, oh, I said, YouTubers? I said, I hate them. I said, they're always so full of themselves and think they know what they're doing and crap and crap, and they're usually just a load of bollocks. Anyway, so I was uh, fixing this MacBook. I've never dealt with MacBooks before, and I was trying to get board views and uh, schematics and things like that. And um, yeah, ine inevitably, like a black hole, the Lewis videos did eventually capture me and drew me in. So um, yeah, in the end, I did watch it, and I had to recant on my original thoughts. Do you ever work on a 13-inch mid-2012 non-Retina MacBook Pros of RAM pin issues? I do, but I never fix the RAM issues. I just we all just put it into one slot, and that's it. I don't know if you can download Good Wife to a 3D printer. I don't think that's such. I don't think that's possible. Hey, Shabu Gaming. She used a device to get the data off the phone. Ah, was it CPU or RAM chip that she was crashing down? Sometimes you just got to do it. I mean, Lipton egg noodle soup. That can be nice. Egg noodle soup, that is. Are you into gaming? Not overly, no. I played Diablo. That's because I generally suck at gaming, so I stick with what I can play. That and maybe uh, Tekken. Again, I suck at most other games, so Tekken was I play. Ah, oh, Cilantro. Uh. Dirtweed. We call that coriander here. And the problem I have generally is that you got to pay a bit of money sometimes to get the games. you got to invest the time into trying to play it. About the most modern thing recently that I've tried to play was uh, Dota 2. I mean, they're okay at it, but I would never play with human beings. And, um, yeah, I'm just no good. No, optimize. We're we're um having an intermission or half time. Cilantro and coriander are different, really. Seriously.
I think the problem I have with Dota 2 is that the pace is so the pace is so quick. And if you slip up at some point, you don't uh, you know level up. Oh. Ooh. Update has gone from being reviewing to publishing. Ooh. Neat. It leaders Booker's on its way to appearing on Amazon shortly. Probably tomorrow or something like that. Hmm. Oh yeah, gotta gotta keep healthy, Mark. Uh, Amen. So you start programming and start board repairing as hobby. Uh, both of them started as hobby, sort of an interest, and then it. Um, well, I wouldn't call it truly a hobby. It was a very strong interest. For me, my hobbies were um, aquarium fish, model aircraft, specifically designing model aircraft, and crashing them a lot. Mm. And when I was first starting, like particularly when I got to university, dating women, that was another very good hobby. <laughs> Uh, obviously, you know, not really a good, uh, it's not conducive to a good marriage to be pursuing that one anymore. Motorbike riding was another good hobby. Also, probably not a good idea anymore. Um, how to start on the board. I think Lewis nailed it when he, damn it, there's a smidge left in that. Lewis nailed it when he says the best way to get started in whatever it is that you want to get started is to start. And I, I know it sounds like one of those stupid, simple, if a tree falls in a forest and no one's around to hear it, you know, did it make a sound type things, one of those sort of tautologies. Is it tautology? I don't know. But it's actually very true. It's, um, at some point you have to make a step. And a lot of us will get stuck on fretting about making the right first step. And so you overanalyze your situation until basically you never end up making that step. Far better to make a step and get it wrong and actually having have made the step than to make no step at all. So just if you find something that you want to fix, give it a shot. Doesn't work, no problem. Try something else. And through that process, you will probably start to get a better idea of where you're heading, what you need, and before you know it, you've you've started. How did you become good at using Linux? Self-taught or job experience? Ah, well, first we have to clarify there that I'm not actually good at Linux, but um, self-taught and job, uh, self-taught and on the job sort of thing. How much did you know about electronics in the first place? Um, well probably back in, it would have been early 1980s. Uh, it was all just, you know, resistors, capacitors, batteries, bulbs. Hell, LEDs weren't even that common, really. At least not cheaply. And logic gates. 4000 series logic gates were the big thing. Stuff like that. So I sort of had an idea of that sort of thing but the problem I had back then was that I didn't really have a project for it and I think without having a I've got a bit without having a project having a target having a reason for doing these sort of things it makes it so much harder to be able to learn and absorb what you're trying to learn as soon as you have a passionate focus for what you're trying to do everything just becomes so much easier um, you absorb it at 
it sticks in your head, all that sort of stuff, which it makes um, quite a case for the whole schooling system being a bit d less than ideal for teaching people. But um, that's another debate entirely. But certainly, surely in your own life, you'll have experienced times where you find you can just consume information like a sponge because you're actually interested in what you're doing. Started off with fixing the cheaper MacBook models and moved in. Yeah, I mean, you, you get things like 1278s, they're a dime a dozen these days. 1460, whoops, 1466s are um, still a little expensive. Okay, so we don't know if this is actually going to fix anything, but we're going to fix it because it's not quite right in the first place. And that's right, I was in the middle of getting my blade changed. It's still a sharp blade, but unfortunately the tip of it is not really doing the job for me. And I need the tip to be exceptionally sharp if I'm to do this job well. So basically you just need to buy yourself a box of a hundred of these blades and whenever they go whenever you feel you've got to put force on the blade to make it scratch up the circuit board or something like that that is probably the time then that you should change the blade there's no real economy in holding out on that now the only way around other than that is to actually learn how to sharpen the blade yourself in which case, if you can do that, bravo to you. Hey Clay Freeman, been a while. Have you been alright? Okay, so let's get this. So now, with this new blade, I've just got to... It, on its own, it digs in and bites. Whereas with the other one, I was... forcing it down and it really still wasn't scratching off anything. Because if you've got to force the blade to do things, then what's going to happen is at some point it is going to snag on something and then you're going to impart all that force into the snag and it's going to take a big chunk out of what you probably don't want to take a big chunk out of. You might just... And if you're a cook or in the kitchen, it's often your flesh. And then you race down to the emergency department, you tell them your sob story while they stitch you up and they just go, mm hmm we see this all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, we've got the V8s. Um, I've had that quite a few years here. I've never actually attended it. I wouldn't mind watching it. I don't mind cars. They're not my first thing, but... I still would in I enjoy a race, but most of the time I'd rather be racing myself. And then you know, I suppose most of the people in the audience do feel that way. I suppose that's why a lot of people live vicariously through the drivers and the teams. Yeah, we normally do have 300 or so. Two, 250 onwards is typical. Every now and then YouTube blesses us and we'll push up to 400 I haven't really got any rhyme or rhythm as to the pattern that YouTube uses and I dare say they like it that way so that people don't start trying to game the system okay I'm, I'm struggling here because I my soldering iron keeps touching onto those two pads on the side there which are rather irrelevant to our situation at this point it is getting rather insistent though I'm 
I'll just find my wire that I can steal a piece of rebar from. Joseph Kathumbi from Kenya. Do you prefer Kenya or Kenya? Because I would hear it both ways when I was in South Africa. And I would hear debate for both ways from people supposedly living there. Check R4830. Ah, Pabo's here. Yeah, R4830. No, we didn't check that one. PP3V3S4. Funnily enough, I was actually looking at that, and I thought, no. But I will go back and check it after I've handled this, because right now we are repairing... What are we repairing? S4 power enable line. Which probably is working okay because we are turning on, but it's not to say that everything that is waiting for it is getting turned on. Uh, looks like someone's not listening after I've already said hello, so, well, not much I can do about that. Oh yeah, hell, never, never, s I mean, okay, look, I'll admit, the very first MacBook I did was not, was a customer's, and that was on their insistence. I actually refused to repair it on the grounds of the fact that I've never worked on before, and in the end, they just said, look, we don't care, we said, just, just give it a shot, see how you go, and I was like, alright, well, look, I can't promise you anything at all. So on that grounding, that was how I did my first MacBook. Otherwise, I would just simply suggest, like, Pedro uh, 147. Where is Pedro tonight? Oh, he's probably sick or something. He had to work today. Anyway, uh, people like Pedro, they just go out and they find themselves a cheap, busted-up MacBook. And they go from there. And it's on their own back. They don't risk anyone's data or machine. And then within about three or four of those... You usually find you're ready to start offering at least fundamental repairs for people. Of course, <laughs> it's almost never a fundamental repair. We just had to change tip to really clear out these, this pair of monsters. Okay, we're going to go check that resistor that Pavo suggested. Now, if you want to get started, then definitely check out the tools list that I've got. You can probably do cheaper, but after a year, you're still going to end up having to buy those tools anyway. So it's up to you whether you buy them now and save your money or buy them later and burn the money that you originally spent. Now, I know that not everybody has that amount of money, but it's really not that expensive these days.
Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's the resistor in the center that he's talking about. Should be a zero ohm. And in this case, it's it's pretty much zero. The it's going crazy there because of the way I've done things with the ranging. Yeah, I've changed the range now. We should get more data in the lower spec. Yeah, so that that's fine. So at this point all we've done is repaired that one trace that was broken and it might not even be relevant. It could be a completely pointless trace. But uh, let's still repair it. <laughs> Just because it's got a no stuff on it itself doesn't mean that that trace doesn't connect up to some other part of the board or some other components that might happen to need that if power or data line or whatever so yeah make sure you reconnect those got one pin in there that's a little bit dirty okay that's no problem just a smidge. Ha, <laughs> Prater. Yeah, fool. Yeah, after taking three months to fix this A1708, I don't really have the greatest of... It's going to take a little while to get that mojo back. So I'm going to do the best I can to not be too cocky about these things. At least I only lost a couple of hundred dollars on this job instead of a hell of a lot more. Has someone attempted to clean that board with scrub and brush? Uh, it's possible. Probably a toothbrush and alcohol, I'd say. It leaves that sort of slightly greasy residue on it. Say a moth. Da bong. Keyboard's working. Yep, keyboard's working. That was the fault. Busted trace, and that wasn't much in that. That was pretty damn small. And at least that goes to show, you know, even though there's no stuff on it, if you've broken that line, even if it doesn't seem to relate to what your fault is, fix it. Because it could be something else. Down the line, that's been turned on, or controlled, that you need. Of course, we've got to make sure it actually does, but yeah, I could I could still be wrong, you know. Ooh, but we'll see, we'll see. We'll do a keyboard test on it. It's going to be running pretty suckfully at the moment because it doesn't have a battery and everything else. Oops. I touched the fan and it got itself into a um, state that it couldn't actually spin. It just oscillated back and forth, it was like, uh, Hey, Paddy Bonza. 80% luck, 20% talent. Oh, man. Give me credit. More like 90% luck. Okay. Terminal. Going to keyboard tester. 
And we want 1466. Not 13. Didn't I? 1, 4. So, yep, there we go. Yeah, uh, if there's going to be a fault, it's going to be in the keyboard now itself, not the actual communication, the keyboard. Okay, here we go. I gotta tell you, I am very glad I wrote this piece of software because it, I use it all the time. And the keyboard's all just good and dandy so we're fixed we've done it that's what it was that little um little itty bitty trace break command cube we're out that was lucky because i did not pass i did not see that on the first pass it was only when i turned the board upside down that it uh came to light to me and someone else they were close they were close they were scratching around there they cleared away the junk but they must have, for whatever reason, saw that it was a no stuff and decided that, well, I don't need to fix that. So, yeah. My goodness. I tell you, I am glad though, that it's a um, short stream tonight because I am stuffed. Thank you, Manfred. Appreciate that. Five euro forty-nine. All good to me. I do wish the Australian dollar would stop being so strong against the US dollar at this point. I mean, to be fair, it's the US dollar that's tanking its guts. Um, but in spite of the second wave scenario of COVID here in Australia, our dollar has gone from about 65 US cents up to now 73 US cents. And that makes a significant impact on certain offshore savings that I have. I'm starting to become poorer by the day because of that. Anyway, so, yep. Yeah, done. Now, given that this has been scrubbed over with alcohol and stuff, I'll put this through the ultrasonic as a courtesy. Yeah, just so it looks really nice. Yeah, flex board views all in uh, US dollars. On the whole, it generally pans out well for me. And also, as a rule, if you are selling things internationally, it generally is better to just sell as US dollars. Uh, most people can do the currency conversion through PayPal. Yeah, I have turned off the ultrasonic cleaner several hours ago. Yeah, Lewis doesn't update Flexboard View. We're up to version 1150 or something like that now. Which is significantly different to what Lewis is using. The nice thing is you can run concurrently multiple different versions of Flexboard View because they just run out of their folder. So when you unpack the zip file, you just run straight out of that folder, the unpack. There's no install required, which means you can have 1150, you can have 872, or what, you know, it doesn't matter. And you just simply run from the version you want to run from. Uh, I guess I should uh, write down the notes for that. So what was that? That was... 8170 pin 4, so trace break at U8170 pin 4, which is S4 power enable, S4. So you'll probably find that that goes off to something that's related to the keyboard processing, and it was just simply staying in the sleep state, or not even sleep state, it wasn't even enabled. And that's why we were not getting any activity. Submit the job note. Done. That's a very terse job sheet, that one. 
Nice to have him terse occasionally. Oh, the link. Right. Sorry about that, Barry. My apologies. All right. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's it for the night. Uh, let's see, that's not my usual sort of two hour, two and a half hour length stream, but you got a bit of mukbanging in there with the uh, eating, and you got to see a fix that wasn't really an obvious fix, and yeah, we had all the people saying that it was going to be the BIOS or something else, even I was going to say it might be the SMC. Turns out it wasn't. It was much easier than that. So that Good luck for me for tonight, at least I'm glad I got that one and um, thank goodness I've got that 1708 off my back tomorrow. I can't wait to contact the customer, assuming it actually gets through the night, and say to them it's fixed and then hand them a bill. And it's going to be a fair size bill, but it's going to be less than what I've spent to actually get that fixed, but that's the way it goes. Victor, hello, Zaxian, I'll see you two later. Okay, take care everyone, I'll see you next time. Catch you.